Hi. Yes. yes. Hi, Ava. Yeah, the session. Nice to probably meet you. Sorry, I haven't run into you. Hello, oh. everyone online. I don't know whether they can hear us yet. They can. I will they can? the microphone, but they couldn't see us. Oh, but, uh, fantastic. Thank you, Mara. Hear. Thanks. We can hear you, but we can't see you. Okay. Uh, I think we just see another copy of the Zoom. Yes, that might be, that might be how it uh, could be. You see Woody now. <laughs> He's on. Yeah. Yeah, we can see Thank that. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll just wait for people to come. It's um, just up the lunch break. But um, how are we looking for the panelists? I, I can't see you now because I see Woody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we have uh, Olga here, Andrew, as well as Kieran, um, and just waiting for Dominique virtually. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, so I will, I will introduce everybody. I'll do the same few words, then I'll basically turn to you so that people can see what you can see. The sound is a little soft uh, from from in the room, just so you know, uh, Ava. Two minutes for the start, and then we'll come back to you, Max. Each time, not more than two minutes. I think it's two minutes are very short, so oh, yeah. yeah I'm not planning to cut you off yeah, violently. No, no, no. I just want to make sure because yes, I don't yes. want to go on and on. Yeah, and yeah, sometimes, you know, people ask for like, oh, you have an intervention of ten minutes. Uh, and that's not it. Yeah. Well, we really want to make it's sure that it's a conversation with the audience. Yeah. That, okay. That's the idea. Otherwise, I would be happy to have longer. That's really loud. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're waiting for Yoichi in person and Ahaji. Um, we haven't seen him, I assume. Oh, Yoichi. These glasses are like. <laughs> so um, May wanna, yeah, you may want to be on that side because uh, the camera is better than like, like a, oh. a cardio machine. Oh, yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe go to that side. Yeah, so it may hide you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Part of what code is about could be brief because I'm talking about what code is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's nothing really. It's just about basically saying, you know, like, it was formed by, like, you know, six champions, blah, 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 and then here's the. Great. Do you, do you want me to say a little bit about. Uh, do you want me to say something like so? I was, about, I was planning to say, like, for example, you know, we launched the action plan at the top of the past 50, mm. and now we need some action, and, you know, here's Dirk to dig a bit deeper into cards, or do you want me to just completely leave that to you? Yeah. Do you prefer? You can leave this to me, actually. Yeah. Like, if you look into the... You have the presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you are moving this. If you're, if you're talking to the room, it'll be kind of a bit hard to hear you, but if you're talking with each other, that's fine. <laughs> Use the microphone. Um, online participants, we can't see you at the moment, but if you, we, we can't hear you very well. I think that we're figuring out tech maybe as well. Um, don't know whether you were trying to talk to us or with each other. That's also fine. We're still waiting for audience uh, and another panelist. I think that was just someone who yeah. was in the background, uh, uh, Ava, who hadn't muted. Oh, okay, great. I can hear you well, Andrew. I, we can, I can hear you very well. I can see you. This is Olga from Buenos Aires. Lovely. Okay. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I could see you briefly. It's just, it's, it's an either or situation in the room. So um, now I see myself rather than you. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to do it. So we have Olga, we have Andrew, Kieran. Um, is Dominique on the line as well? I am here. Yeah. I'll put my uh, video on in a second. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Um, fantastic. So we were just, just waiting for another panelist and then the room is still fairly empty. I know the online room is not. Um, it's filling up, but we'll just give it another few minutes so people can join after the lunch break. And it seems to be chilly in the room. I apologize. I can't do anything about that, but I, I have raised it now. <laughs> <laughs>
Excuse me. Andrew, we're hearing a little bit of rustling. Um, we're going to kick off in a moment, but um, maybe you can mute yourself until then. Thank you. For everybody online, we're going to start in one minute at, well, our local time is uh, 3 or 3 or 5. Andrew, I think we can still hear you type. Oh, there you go. You're muted now. <laughs> Thank you. Good. I think we're in time. I think there will be more people joining in the room probably as we go, but I do want to kick off because you're all um, waiting desperately for the session to start, I'm sure. Um, welcome, and I hope you had a good lunch break if you're here in person, and welcome to everybody online. It's great to see you. Um, we are here for the Open Forum Future of the Internet, Realising a Shared Vision. Um, and it's great to see many of you here. We know we have a lot of competition. There's a lot of overlapping sessions, but um, I'm glad you found the time to connect to our session today. Um, just wanted to say a few housekeeping remarks. Um, in terms of the structure of the session, we're really keen to get the audience to participate. So um, you can feel free throughout the session to drop questions or comments into the chat. Um, if you're in the room, feel free to connect to the Zoom as well, or otherwise you have the opportunity in the second half of the session to ask your questions or raise comments um, directly in the room. I'll be taking comments from both um, virtual and room. Um, and just to say that, you know, the way we run the session, we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to talk. So we're going to have um, the first half with our panelists. We have seven panelists. I'll introduce them in one moment. Um, two of them you see in person. We're missing one, unfortunately. We're hoping that he will still join um, while I speak, but um, I don't want to keep you waiting longer. Um, and then we have also four virtual panelists that I will be introducing. So, in the room, and um, we're missing Ahaji Mbo, but we'll see whether he will join. Um, we have Yoichi Ida, he's Deputy Director General for G7 and G20 Relations at the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications in Japan. Thank you so much. Welcome, Yoichi. Um, and we have Dr. Marielza Oliveira, Director for Partnerships and Operational Programme Monitoring Communications and Information Sector of UNESCO. 
guests are welcome as well. Um, turning to our online participants, our panelists, uh, we have Olga Cavalli. Um, she's a National Cybersecurity Director in Argentina uh, and Academic Director of the South School of Internet Governance. Great to have you. Thank you so much for connecting. Hello. Um, we have, I think you can't see me, so I did wave at you. We have uh, Kira McCarthy, a board member of Nominate, um, which is the UK's CCTLD registry and author. Um, and then we have Andrew Campling and Dominic Lazansky. Both of them are close uh, friends of the UK government um, and they are working, um, Andrew is working as a consultant uh, and Dominic as well, and have a lot of experience working in the IETF uh, and Dominic as well in the ITU. So welcome all of you online and uh, welcome again to everybody else who joined us today. I'm seeing there's more people joining us in the room as well. Um, I don't want to spend too much time taking the floor because I really want you to hear from our panelists. Um, but this session really leads on from a session we held last year, which unfortunately I missed because I was on maternity leave. But my team here um, and have Ross next to me um, from my team, um, the UK government, Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. I realised I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. Maybe that would have been a good thing to do. Um, and Ross is here with me um, looking at what's happening online. Um, Nigel, you will see in the audience, I learned that Nigel Hickson is a uh, world-renowned internet governance forum expert. That, uh, he knows everyone that we walk through the floors, and I'm sure most of you will know him as well. Um, and we have Marek Blachert online, and I think Stacey Hoffman I've seen as well on screen, so she's joined us from the team. Um, Marek will be helping us especially online to um, make sure that we're seeing all the questions so do you make sure that you uh, contribute in the comment section and you will also see if there's um, hands are missing so he'll uh, wave frantically online at me um, through Ross so thank you for that um, this project uh, that we've uh, co contributed to and, and, and have really pushed forward as UK government on future of the internet there's, there's always a good time to talk about the future of the internet and there will probably never be a time where we don't want to talk about the future of the internet. Um, but we we kicked that off last year with um, a sort of a UK-led um, vision for the future of the internet that was much more forward-looking in a positive way. I think listening to a lot of the sessions here at the IGF, it's very easy to be trapped in um, the challenges, the issues, what isn't working, who isn't connected, um, where, are the challenge, where are the sort of criminal aspects of internet um, and how it's being used. Um, and sometimes we can get lost in that and don't really focus on what actually our positive vision is and how we are contributing to that and how we're making sure that um, it delivers for all and also looking at our successes and how the internet has been successful, why it needs to continue um, to deliver on those successes and outcomes and how we can make sure it remains resilient, secure, safe, open, um, interoperable, etc. Um, we had the IGF last year, as I said, and our minister set out kind of the principles that the UK very much stands for. We also embedded them um, this year in the UK digital strategy the government published earlier this year. Um, and you will also see them reflected in the declaration of the future of the internet, which I believe there's a session later today that will discuss that in detail. Um, it's a good time to look at this again. Um, you know, the, we're seeing so many discussions on internet fragmentation, which is a big focus for the UK as well, um, but also an increasing amount of um, conversations on how we can challenge, how we, how we can tackle connectivity and really um, get those that are still not connected connected to the internet and benefit. Um, I'm taking some personal reflections home for sure, um, also on. Um, the, the challenges that connectivity brings, even if people are connected, how can we make sure that they are um, able to access it and use the internet? It's not just the connecting them that is the problem. Um, and that also leads to cultural, um, educational, language aspects of the challenge. Um, and then um, just looking looking sort of ahead to this positive agenda, we want to make sure that everybody's involved in that. Um, the UK very much stands for multi-stakeholder um, internet governance. We want to make sure that everybody has a role to play, understands their role within that system. And um, thinking sort of ahead, we, we don't believe that there needs to be a trade-off where you can say, oh, now the internet can only be secure, but it can't be open if it's secure. We do think you can bridge these principles that we uphold on secure and open. We think... The internet can be safe, but still allow for permissionless innovation. Um, it can be resilient, but it can still retain its decentralized nature. But it can only do all of those things when all stakeholders are playing their part within that. Um, over the last year, just, just before I close on my own remarks, we've seen kind of a lot of efforts, um, certainly from our side, to embed 
this vision in in practice of internet because we understand the vision is one thing it's great good if we agree but how do we make that operationalize um, how do we make sure that it actually um, is what we live in the internet governance world so we started that discussion at home in the uk and, and had discussions on that level we engaged in regional igfs and, and ross has been at the african igf um, which is really exciting to see the african community's perspective on that um, but also in other fora um, like the internet engineering task force again sort of heard that organization's name quite a few times dropped during the sessions and it's really good to see the recognition of their role within that ecosystem um, and also looking ahead we're really keen to use the RISIS process and re-establish and reconfirm our commitment to multi-stakeholderism and really driving that process forward and has, that has delivered so well for so many and make sure that it delivers for more um, and even, even more for more. Um, I will close there. Um, we, I will move to panellists now. I'll give you a bit of a um, prompt, but if you, um, you're very welcome to kind of jump in on other people's points as well. And um, Marielsa, if, if you don't mind me starting with you, <laughs> given that you're sitting right next to me, I think that's, that's most appropriate. Um, maybe some reflections on the last year. I want to start with sort of what happened over the last year um, before we kind of look into the future of the future of the internet, as, as I say. Okay. Hello, everyone. Well, thank you very much for having me here. As a matter, of, you know, uh, to start with, um, and this is a fascinating and important conversation because, it, you know, in the last year we came to the realization of the incredibly precious resource that the internet is. You know, it's, it it adds resilience to mankind. You know, so so we talk about the resilient internet, but actually we are more resilient because of the internet. The way we continue to function, the societies continue to function, economies continue to function, education continue to function. You know, of course, not at 100%, but, um, but we continue to function under the, pan the pandemic is incredible. And we realized also that this is a fragile resource that needs a lot of care. Um, but, uh, but there has a, a lot of different strengths that we didn't know about. You know, for example, we added 782 million new users to the internet in the last two years. And our infrastructure held and embraced, you know, almost a billion new users. You know, uh, we're talking 20% of all the users in the world. And we could accommodate them. But of course, we also realize that we have differences in tremendous divides in how we work uh, with internet in different contexts and uh, with different work groups. But the one thing that uh, I think it was uh, a major uh, um, success of the last year is that we made a plan together. The multi stakeholder community actually made a plan together to close some of these, uh, of these divides that exist. And, and there are two different types of divides. You mentioned them some, uh, um, anyways. You know, one is the issues of uh, connectivity and uh, what we call meaningful access. The fact that, um, you know, that uh, some people are not online, they are not even connected, they don't have you know, a bandwidth. Others don't have the device or, the, or are unable to afford the data packages. And others don't even have the languages you know, uh, in which to communicate because literally about 50% of the content on the internet is either English or Chinese. And there are 7,061 languages, you know, globally and, you know, uh, less than 200 active on the internet. So, but, but also we see ICANN. Yesterday I was in a session and, you know, the CEO of ICANN was saying that uh, they are closing the divide, the language divide for 3,000 languages. Can you imagine? This is incredible. You know, this is really incredible because people will do actually what the internet is useful for. They will access information and knowledge because every time we do that, we contribute to the, you know, to the information and knowledge ecosystem. That's when we all benefit, because actually the internet benefits even those that are not connected. You know, uh, when we have openness, for example, and it can exchange, you know, scientists can exchange data sets and knowledge about that. Those not connected get vaccines too, you know. So knowledge available on the internet benefits us all. And the fact that we are making a plan together to close the divides in connectivity, number one, and in capacities, which is the second type of divide, not, not that it's less important, but as a, uh, a second type of divide, is something incredible. And I really would like to, to say that the international community should be really congratulated about that. And one of the things that we're looking forward is the Global Digital Compact 
with ethical kind of principles that we together need to, up, you know, to uphold and to take forward an internet that is human rights based, that is open, that is accessible, that is most stakeholder led, and that really embraces everyone leaving no one behind. So let me start here. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pick up on a point you ended on there in terms of capacity. And Olga, I would move to you next online. Um, if you're able to unmute yourself, I hope this works out okay. Um, I know that you're you're doing a lot of work in that area. Maybe you have some reflections as well on the last year. Ah, now I, I sorry I couldn't unmute, but I'm I'm muted. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for giving me the floor, and thank you for the. UK government for inviting me. Thank you, Marek, Nigel, and, and for this very interesting session. Um, I would like to uh, stress some issues that are more related with developing economies, developing countries. What has been, and, and, and I can say that this session is very much alike what I like because I'm always optimistic about the use of the internet. I've been related with technology all my life since I started engineering many years ago and I'm always optimistic and I think technology and the internet can bring us a lot of very very good things apart from the fact that there are threats and some things that we have to look at and take care of. So at, at the regional level we have seen enhancing the uh, ICT infrastructure and so Latin America in general is enhancing the ICT infrastructure. This has an important thing if you look at the percentage of users in the region it's not that bad compared with other regions. But the thing with Latin America is the huge imbalance in between some cities, countries, or in between countries. So um, as far as we have more and more infrastructure, we will be able to close that gap, the, the difference in between main cities or capital cities and other regions within countries or in between countries. Also, uh, our colleague just mentioned the, the thing of affordability and usability. That is something that we have to take care of. Still, the technology is expensive to buy and sometimes it's not so easy to be used. But uh, it's uh, for, for developing countries, it's complex. Most of the technology that we use is is imported from other countries. We don't produce that much. We do produce software, for example, but not many appliances or, or, or computers or, or mobile phones. Um, one thing important about um, regulations is that all countries are revising some regulations, like for example, um, the uh, privacy policies in general, mainly led by the changes made by the European Union that has impacted all over the world. But the th good thing that I have seen in those processes that have been led by governments are also very much multi-stakeholder led. So all the, all the parts of the, of the community were involved in those processes. So I think that that's uh, remarkable and, and it was good. And also I would like to stress the fact that the technology allowed the governments to uh, keep on working during the pandemic and due to the some good tools that we have, especially in Argentina, about e-government. And that has been very successful during the pandemic and has been enhanced over the, this year. And we hope to enhance it more with interoperability in between different systems of the, of the government. So I will stop here. It's challenging for developing countries to keep on because technology changes very, very quickly. It, it, so it posed a, a big challenge for governments, but I'm very optimistic, especially about this, the, 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 import, the importance that we saw during the pandemic of the use of uh, ICT, especially for government functioning. Thank you so much, Olga, making very, very important points there. I'm wondering if I can turn to Dominique online. Um, I know that you're doing work in the ITU and the IETF, and I wondered whether you have some reflections, not just about the last year, but also kind of just at the back of the Planipot uh, conference earlier this year, whether there's more that you think we need to do, where the gaps are as well. Dominique, you're still muted. Well, uh, there we go. There you are. But thank you. Um, yeah, and thank you. And thank you for, for having me on this panel. And I just a couple of reflections, I think. Um, one is that 
I just wanted to echo what I've heard um, from a couple of uh, a couple of people over the last couple of days. Like the internet is doing really well, um, and we have a lot of positive things that we need to take away and and be proud of. Um, and one of the things that I keep seeing that's working really well, yes, there are issues and yes, people need to, uh, you know, negotiate and come to the table, but the, the governance framework, um, the multi-stakeholder model, there was quite a lot of discussion about it uh, at the Plenty Pot, especially from um, a wide variety of countries that don't necessarily always participate. Uh, so there were two things. First of all, they were talking about governance and and how do we participate and how do we do this and and we're not sure it's working and and all of us are sitting there thinking yeah it is working and we want to get you to participate more and we want to get you know people in your countries to participate more and people that are users to participate more and i think the reflection of quite a number of us at the plenty pot was that that actually when we start talking about it we realize that what's been happening over the last 20 years has um, has actually worked. And again, there in the review that's coming up with WISIS Plus 20, we will be uh, definitely reviewing, you know, a number of different issues, including the mandate for the IGF, and um, also uh, looking at, you know, the successes and and some of the sort of things we need to work on collectively as a as a global um, as a global community going forward. But I think it's really important to take a moment and reflect on the fact that even through COVID, as our distinguished panelists said, we the internet's worked really well and we've had success in uh, investments uh, from both governments and the private sector primarily that have been very successful and have been brought forward because of the increased capacity on the internet. And we've also had um, a number of different issues and um, increase, at least from what I'm seeing, in different types of capacity building and information sharing online through the, through the use of, um, again, being online and also um, being able to access people from all over the world, quite frankly, to share information. And I, personally, I've been engaged in a number of capacity building projects and a couple off the back of the ITU because I was able to um, to engage and talk to, to different organizations and, and countries that had certain capacity needs as well. Um, I think just one last comment. We'll hear probably a little bit more about the IETF uh, from Andrew um, because he and I spend a lot of time in there. I, we know that there are improvements that need to be made. We know that we need to ensure that there's more participation. But um, the future of the internet from a, in a IETF community perspective as individuals um, is looking quite interesting. And the changes that the internet and the changes that the technology is taking on will hopefully increase sustainability um, if all of us do our work and, and continue to try to make um, relationships and, and both online and offline and, and work together. So I'll leave it there. I know maybe uh, Kieran doesn't necessarily agree with all that I've said, but I'm looking forward to, to hearing from other people. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. I'm sure Kieran will get an opportunity to disagree if he would like to. Um, you did a perfect segue to Andrew. Andrew, what are your reflections on the IETF in particular and, and where we might need to adapt the internet governance system to respond to challenges and our, our vision that um, reflects that as well? Uh, thank you. Uh uh, Eva, and thank you, Dom, for the uh, uh, helpful segue. Uh, um, uh, it's almost as if we rehearsed that, which we clearly haven't. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, let me backtrack slightly, and then I'll go on to the specific on, on, on the ITF, because um, uh, without re reiterating things that have been mentioned thus far, I'd, uh, just a couple of other reflections before I get on to the ITF. Um, I think, dare I say it, and I'm sure it's going to come up again um, in the discussion, the Declaration on the Future of the Internet, I think, is incredibly important. Um, uh, the fact that that's come out uh, is, is really helpful to provide an alternative vision uh, for, for the future of the internet, perhaps to that being promoted by um, other parties. Um, I think that's that's been sorely needed uh, and maybe needs to have provision for non-government signatories going forward so it can become a true um, multi-stakeholder um, document. Um, one of the other things I think is really important this year has been the progress on um, developments in, in global taxation. Um, um, so that uh, the uh, tech sector sort of makes a fair contribution in the markets in which it's extracting an enormous amount of, of value. So I think that's uh, tremendously positive. 
Um, and also, dare I say, it, there seems to be greater recognition, I wouldn't say agreement, but at least rec recognition about the need to act to address some of the potential harms that the internet can uh, um, uh, facilitate, sort of unintended consequences of, of, of the internet. And that's maybe leading to a more balanced discussion on things like governance, digital sovereignty, uh, etc. Specifically, though, getting on to the uh, uh, ITF, um, uh, I mean, certainly the, the sort of the fact that we're now meeting again in person, I think, is really helpful because um, that was sorely missed um, sort of for about half a dozen or, or so meetings. So, uh, starting again this year in uh, 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 Vienna um, uh, in person, uh, and that's really started to, I think, re energize um, the activities of, of the uh, uh, community. Um, I think, though, there's been some recognition within the ITF. Um, I wouldn't say it's universally recognised, but at least um, uh, some discussion about the fact that decisions that the ITF makes, technical decisions, can have significant policy consequences. Um, um, and uh, uh, so I think one of the really important things we need to do much better is to broaden the uh, base of engagement within the ITF, because it's not tremendously diverse be that in terms of geographic input and it's very highly skewed towards North America um, and Europe in particular um, and so it needs to be more geographically um, diverse it certainly has, needs to have a significantly better gender diverse uh, 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 Um, that is a, 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 and has been for a long time an ongoing problem. But perhaps more importantly than both of those, it needs to have more input from people from, um, with expertise in public policy, um, in civil society, in academia, uh, in, in industry, outside of the tech sector, because all of those voices are sorely missing. And a lot of the technical decisions that are made have impacts on all of those communities. So having multi-stakeholder input into the ITF, I, I think, is something which, which needs action. Uh, there are no barriers to that participation, but people need to turn up. Up. Um, um, so that's something that perhaps the IGF could help spread the message. So when we meet next in uh, mid-March uh, in Japan, it will be fantastic to see more people there. Um, and we are starting to run um, uh, events uh, within the ITF um, when it's in a particular uh, 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 region. So uh, we will hopefully we'll be doing this again in uh, uh, in Japan um, to um, uh, uh, help to attract those who perhaps haven't previously engaged but are interested in doing so in the future to help signpost how how they might do that. So I think that's going to be work uh, that, that needs to be undertaken. Um, but I'll stop there to give somebody else a chance. Um, I'm sure there's plenty more we can discuss. Thanks. Thank you, Andrew. I promise I have not talked to the panellists to set all of this up, but Andrew has very smoothly given me the segue to our Japanese representative. Um, in addition to the IETF, um, next year, 2023, we will also see, of course, G7 presidency in Japan, and also the next IGF will be hosted at the end of the year um, in Japan. So, um, Yoichi would love your reflections on your Japanese plans for that and how you see the internet governance um, kind of agenda play out, especially in relation to that positive vision for the future internet. Thank you very much, Eva, and thank you very much for having me in this uh, very uh, important session. Uh, as uh, many of you uh, well understand, uh, Japan is a strong believer in innovation, strong believer in technology, and a strong believer in open and free internet. And so, uh, as many of you are well aware, you know, Japan is a country where the population is rapidly aging and the population is even decreasing. So if we want to keep the country's economy and the society as lively as now, well, we need to make the best use of technologies. And internet is the essential foundation for the society and the economy. Of course, we understand, uh, you know, there are many issues coming up from 
the diffusion of digital technology and usage of internet. And we recognize as government and maybe as a part of society, we recognize the necessity of building up uh, rules to face with those new challenges in the society. But we also believe those rules are not limited to government regulation and we need to talk with different stakeholders when we design and implement the rules for technology, rules for internet, rules for innovations. So uh, we are always trying to find the best way to building the rules into the society and the economy, but not in the way to hamper and prevent uh, innovation. So we have been proposing some discussions, international discussions on digital policy, data uh, utilization or AI implementation in the society which are now discussing uh, as a, a data free flow with the trust or AI principles and the, in many uh, international uh, fora. And uh, uh, our first intention to propose those uh, discussions are always how uh, we want to know how we can make best use of innovation, make best of technologies so that we can keep our society and the economy uh, as, uh, as lively and energetic as possible. And now, uh, as uh, kindly introduced, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the coming uh, host uh, country of IGF next year. And we are also taking the presidency of uh, G7 next year. So we are trying to know how to interact these different uh, discussions between governmental fora and the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, fora. Even in the governmental fora, such as G7 or G20, when it comes to the matter of uh, digital technology or digital economy policy, we are always trying to listen to other stakeholders, including uh, industry, academia, and civil society. So uh, next year, we are trying to, to create opportunities to listen to the voices from those stakeholders, communities, and try to make best use of those voices into the policy discussions, not only in G7, but we uh, also try to find the way to strengthen the IGF framework so that the global internet policy making uh, can work uh, even better than now. And uh, we believe uh, that is the way for all of us to build up our prosperous future through the prosperous future of the internet. And that is something we want to work all together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yoichi. I think I have a really powerful vision there for the next year and the agenda. Um, Kieran, last but not least from our panelists, um, it would be great to hear your reflections on where do you see sort of very actionable and forward-looking steps we can take as a community to make that vision a reality? Over to you. Hi, uh, thank you. And thank you very much for inviting me on this panel. So um, I just want to say briefly on, on the sort of the successes that we've seen this year, because I like the idea of talking Positively, we spend too much time complaining about the problems that exist. So positively, uh, 
There's a new IT Secretary General, who is the first female Secretary General. I think that is very good. Uh, and she's from the US. She's, she's offered a, um, a very different vision to the vision that was offered by her rival for the role, which, who was uh, from uh, Russian Federation. So I think that's a, a, a big positive. And I hope that we'll see the ITU uh, spending less time sort of battling with internet organizations and more time working with them to find gaps. So that's potentially a huge positive. Another big positive is potentially the new leadership panel, the IGF. I think there is a, there's a big chance there for the IGF to have greater political influence. And that will mean, hopefully, the technical voices and civil society voices will be heard at the at higher level. So I think that's a potentially big positive for the internet. Um, there's some new legislation in the US and the UK, which I think is going the right sort of direction. Uh, the online safety bill is going to come into the UK parliament next month. Well, in, you know, sort of in December, so very soon. Um, and that's taking a better line, a more collaborative line. I think it's more sort of internet real in terms of um, how to make improvements without trying to ban things, which I think we doesn't tend to work. And then the other big positive was um, in per, back to in-person meetings. Uh, the IETF was in London recently. I'm in London. ICANN was at The Hague uh, and Los Angeles recently, so in-person meetings is terrific. So those are all the positives I've seen this year. Um, in terms of sort of uh, adapting and, and stuff that needs to be done forward-looking, I would say my focus would be on the internet organizations, that's how, how I sort of see it. And um, I'd say that all of them, uh, ICANN, ITF, the RARs, the root server operators, ISOC, they all need to get over themselves a little bit and um, and recognize that the world needs and expects there to be a kind of a, a, a body of some form that can take input and give answers on technical issues uh, to do with the internet. I think they need to recognize that reality. That's where we need to go. And those issues will include political, uh, economic and social problems. And I think the technical organizations just need to recognize that reality and embrace that reality and um, provide sort of technical solutions. So I think that's how we need to adapt. And in terms of looking forward, again, with the focus on sort of internet organizations, I think uh, they need to embrace external accountability and external review. I think it's time for that. Everybody learns that at a certain point. And I think it's time the internet organizations recognize that they don't know the answer to everything. And there are a lot of lessons to be learned from other organizations in history. And it's time to start bringing that in. Uh, and there needs to be, crucially, strategic direction. I don't think there is a strategic direction right now, um, and there should be one. That would really help if the technical, the internet organizations had a, a direction that everyone agreed on. Uh, and if it was focused on action and delivery, it tends, there's a strong tendency for discussion and disagreement and kind of grinding to a halt. Um, if there was a strategic direction and agreement to move towards action and move towards delivery of agreement, that would be really great. And then lastly, um, significantly improved participation, um, which would in absolutely mean greater diversity on all levels. Uh, and I think there's really very much in their interests, those organizations' interests to be significantly more diverse. And uh, there needs to be sort of a wholesale reform. There needs to be someone looking at participation saying what is the participation and where should it be and why aren't we there and what could we do like a real a solid look at improving participation and there needs to be fresh blood brought in and that would happen I think as part of that so that would be my that's my I think it's been a relatively positive year uh, certainly better than other years and um, and that's what be my recommendations what we need to do to to move forward thank you thank you Kieran um I think we heard some really bold proposals there, so I would love to hear more um, from our other panelists, but also from the audience, because now we're opening up for our Q&A. Um, I know there's been already a few questions online, so we'll go to those first, but if you in the room would like to start thinking about your questions or comments, um, and I will get to you as soon as we've gone through a few online. Um, and also, once I reach back to the panelists, feel free to also comment on other panelists' points. Um, I'm not limiting you to the questions that are being asked by the audience. Um, so turning sort of half to Marek, you're online with us. Um, who's sort of first in line here? Yeah, um, and yeah, just 
to second. I think the, the panel covered a, a lot of ground. Um, and so definitely encourage people to, to put forward your questions or raise your hand on Zoom. Um, I think there's been one request uh, for the floor uh, from Amir. Um, and so uh, I, I would call on you to take the floor to uh, make your statement um, and pose a, a kind of question or thought uh, to the uh, panelists. Thank you. Hello, uh, could I jump in? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, for, indeed, for giving me the floor. Uh, uh, can you hear me, well? Yes, we can. We can hear you in the room. Yes, thank you. Yeah. We can also see you now. Do go ahead. Hello everyone and uh, distinguished panelists. Uh, I should first of all thanks for organizing this timely session. I'm Amir Mosabir from Iranian Academy. I would like to talk about many reasons for internet fragmentation that can endanger the vision of uh, one global internet. I think the main reason are uh, four reasons. The first reason is lack of respect for national sovereignty and values of all countries and sovereign equality of all nations in cyberspace. Uh, second reason is increasing in trends of cyber threats, cyber threats like um, cyber attacks, internet weaponization and internet uh, militarization and use of internet for illegitimate, uh, illegitimate uh, geopolitical goals by some uh, by some state. Uh, third reason is unilateral coercive measures used to end in digital environment at all levels. We, uh, we, we witness this kind of UCM is is in applying uh, in many different layers in uh, infrastructures, access, DNS, technology, and so on and so forth, and digital resources. Uh, a fourth reason is non cooperation of global digital platforms with law enforcement of other countries regarding illegal content, like content related to incitement, violence, hate speech, and organized disinformation campaigns, and also lack of cooperation in preventing and combating cybercrime. We also witness that some uh, global uh, uh, service providers refuse to cooperate with other governments, even in establishment of uh, official representatives in the country. My suggestions to solve these issues are development of international legally binding agreements on internet governance based on international law. A second suggestion is establishment of global framework, rules and norms on responsible and accountable behavior of global digital platforms and service providers. Third suggestion is defining vision of internet as a peaceful and development oriented environment for public good, not as a new battlefield and militarized environments through signing a global declaration by all members. Uh, my question uh, my question is that what could be a contribution of global digital compact to address these critical issues and implementation of this solution? Thank you very much. Thank you, Amir. Um, I'll take a few comments. Um, Olga, we've seen that you wanted to come in on that. Um, I'll bring you in once we have the other questions as well. Um, Pablo, I think you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, I'm Pablo Hinojosa. I work for APNIC, one of the regional internet registries based in Australia um, and working in Asia Pacific. 
Uh, and I have a question uh, following up uh, Kieran's intervention. Um, he mentioned uh, about the uh, leadership requirements uh, also from technical organizations and the need for coordination also at the political uh, level, which is very interesting also from your uh, recent paper uh, that you published uh, from the Tony Blair Institute, um, which offers a very interesting perspective. I want to follow up around that, uh, and, and basically my question is uh, bottom up or top down. Um, you, you talked about uh, the leadership and if it is um, sort of at the, the secretariat level or at the community level. Uh, so that's one question that I want also to um, compare as well with the situation of the IGF and the IGF's future. Um, uh, we have a high level panel uh, recently established uh, and, and we have uh, a community of 20 years uh, also participating very actively. So um, what insights would you offer uh, about the, the, the leadership uh, in both cases, the, the IGF and the uh, technical community? Thank you. Um, I'll give Kieran an opportunity to respond to that in one moment. Just wanted to see whether there's any questions in the room. I don't think we have any at the moment. So while we, why don't we go back around to our panelists? Um, Olga, I know that you wanted to come in um, on Amir's questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Amir, for the, for the question. It was quite broad, but I would like to uh, make some comments. Um, one about fragmentation. We have been talking about fragmentation from different perspectives. Internet has changed over the last 20 years, but we have been talking about that for 20 years. And that was one of the main issues of the World Summit of Information Society like 15, 16 years ago. I believe, I'm always optimistic and I believe in, in human uh, intelligence. And as soon as there will be a fragmented part of the internet, I am sure that it will be overcome by, by, by some new technology that will, that will interact with um, and, and will make it a broad and, and unique again. This is my, my hope and it has been happening since uh, since the many years and about uh, cyber security and cyber threats um, there are several efforts uh, done at the global level that uh, for the good they have been more open through the time and for example the open-ended working group that it's meeting virtually uh, next week and it will have a meeting in new york in next year in march so um, the remarkable thing about this process for example that at the beginning it was closer now it's open and it's not only open for governments, it's also open for uh, civil society and technical community. So I would stress the fact that these processes are happening. It is not easy. The visions are different and they have different perspectives, but it's a good place to interact and to learn at the national level. And I would say at the community level, one of the most important things is, is rise awareness. If we all learn how to be pro to protect ourselves, so the, the, the level of, uh, of impact of any cyber threat would diminish extremely uh, in an extremely important way. Uh, and also capacity building, but not only for technical community and for technical people, capacity building at all levels, and especially for children, young people and older people that have more problems to access the internet and that don't understand or don't, don't not, not aware or don't know all the details. So it's our role, those of us that are more involved, to act locally and our communities. And if each of us do that, that will have a global impact. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olga. Um, any of our in-person panelists who want to come in before I go back to Kieran and Dominique? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, I mean, I, I think our question, uh, you know, the questions that were raised were spectacularly important. So uh, I just want to, you know, touch on, on, on a few of those, you know, on, on the issues of, uh, for example, on, uh, on assessing the internet ecosystems and looking at uh, the positives and the gaps and the negatives, you know, that exist. I just want to say that, uh, you know, with UNESCO, um, we've been, you know, UNESCO has been working with uh, 44 member states uh, right now to implement a um, a deep national assessment of internet ecosystems, looking at uh, uh, on the basis of a framework that we call the ROAM, uh, the Human Rights, Openness, Accessibility, Mode Stakeholderism, um, and uh, 303 in uh, um, indicators, um, out of which we can 
literally identify all the gaps that exist in different contexts. And this has been uh, applied from, you know, starting with Brazil, uh, Germany did it, you know, uh, uh, we recently have, you know, uh, we have uh, 17 African countries undertaking that so that we can really see what are the issues in each place, in each uh, uh, location that really, really need to be addressed. Um, then we also, uh, um, I, I hear about the competent, you know, the, the issues of uh, building capacity, which is incredibly important. And I just want to highlight uh, that uh, decision makers have been asking us, you know, uh, uh, for this kind of capacity development. So we've been working, for example, uh, with uh, uh, judicial actors. Uh, we trained last year 45, well, this year actually, we finished the training of 4,500 uh, judges and uh, public prosecutors from 140 countries on artificial intelligence, digital transformation, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the rule of law. Because they make decisions, they, well, first of all, they, they adjudicate disputes that arise out of, uh, of uh, digital transformation, artificial intelligence, without the deep knowledge that they need, you know, to actually do that. Uh, do that. And also they apply these technologies to the justice systems themselves, you know, so they need to know where the harms, where are the potentials, what are the opportunities, and so on. We just developed and launched uh, with the ITU, uh, uh, which has a very close partner with the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. Um, it's a joint venture, let's say, uh, between the ITU and UNESCO. We just joined, uh, uh, launched uh, in September a competency framework for civil servants that is actually addressing capacities in ministries of IT, you know, that, that, so that they can understand all, you know, and acquire all the, te the competences they need to guide and lead digital transformation in the country. We just completed also the Transforming Education Summit uh, um, when uh, uh, the special advisor of the Secretary General was talking about uh, uh, the need to expand, you know, access to, uh, uh, to education. Um, and uh, create digital platforms for that. So we are, we are advocating not only for the digital platforms with open educational resources making avail made available, but also media and information literacy. You know, so we have a curriculum to start uh, uh, building capacities to, for people to res really resist misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, radicalization, cyberbullying, and all that, which we know are harms that exist. Uh, in the ecosystem from the very earliest age, all the way, you know, learning all the way through their lives, you know, to, to really address this, this potential harms. Um, and uh, so there, there are quite a lot of different initiatives out there that are trying to ad exactly address some of the issues that, uh, that uh, our, our uh, um, you know, the people who raise questions uh, uh, um, um, mentioned. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, we are going to see a very transformed uh, internet in the in the next five, you know few years, and I really want to congratulate Japan for being the one that will host this this uh, you know this movement forward. And so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know that we have one more question before we go to Kieran on Pablo's question. Um, I'm, I might just take another one from the online space. Um, Marek, maybe you can help me point out who that is. Yeah, so I think there's a hand up from uh, the Ghana Viewing Hub. Oh, uh, great. And, Please and go ahead. If you could just... Yeah. We can see you. Hello? Yes, we can yeah, hear hello. you too. Thank you. Yes, hi there. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we are being from Ghana. And, uh, my question is with regards to the internet implementation or internet shutdown. Uh, more often than not, we get to see government government agencies trying to shut down the internet, uh, especially during elections. Just all in the name that they want to protect um, the servers from being hacked and other stuff. Um, what if the internet tells us for you about this? Um, because we feel like it is an infringement of Imagine someone having an online interview that is totally not related to uh, the election or whatever. And because of the so called election, the person cannot have access to the internet or the government has chosen to shut it down. Are there policies being uh, enacted to implement this to fight against it? And if there are, can we have access to the link of 
And then the other one is that on five seconds. Now, for people who feel they are in that race, I will be free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I will go back to our online panelists. Um, I have Kieran, Dominic, and then Andrew. Um, Kieran, do you want to kick off? You had a direct question there from Pablo to you. Yeah, so I, so I, I think Pablo's question was about ISTAR and IGF and bottom-up, top-down leadership. Um, and so on that, I would say, well, ISTAR, if people are unaware that ISTAR is basically the, the, the sort of the heads of the internet organizations occasionally get together. Um, and um, usually around a crisis. Um, and I think that in theory, that's um, that's a good approach. What I think the problem has been is that um, there's been just the sort of heads have come together. They've not really built a structure um, underneath it. And so it has typically in the past worked on um, personalities, whether they literally get on with one another. And so that's not a very good way of, of doing sort of inter-organizational um, work. So I would argue that the by the almost obvious solution is to find the people um, several stages below that and get them working with one another on topics that everyone can agree that they have crossover on. Um, and some of the issues raised by some of the speakers are, are topics that I think the technical community could, could certainly recognize it has a role to play in. So I'd like to see um, more of a bottom-up approach to that and literally having different layers, different people in different layers of organizations working together, and then it'd be bubbled up to the leaders at the top who help make decisions about how they're going to progress forward. I think that would be a, a much more effective system than we have right now. Um, likewise, with the IGF, I mean, the leadership panel, I think, is, is theoretically, uh, it could be really useful. It will raise the profile of the IGF in uh, UN circles, and that can only be a good thing. But there is this tendency uh, and it's happened many times in the past. People that have been following internet governance for a long time will know that whenever there's a big issue, they sort of vote, well, let's bring in the great and the good and uh, put them on a, on a sort of important group and, and they'll figure out an answer. And it hasn't been very effective. And I think the solution to this is to find the right kinds of leaders. And there have been a few over the years. And the right kind of leader is the one that genuinely wishes to reflect what the broad consensus is of the internet community. And if you get those kinds of leaders so they end up being voices for what the community comes up with, then I think that's great. And then the flip side of that is a much more effort is needed into getting more people participating and agreeing what is the general consensus. And then to have that reflected by these sort of, uh, you know, sort of chosen leaders at the top. So I think we've got it a little bit upside down. We keep bringing in leaders at the top and expecting them to navigate through this impossible series of problems and and um, that can't be done until you've had sort of a general consensus by everybody else it's not easy but we keep trying to find shortcuts and it hasn't worked yet so that would be my answer thank you karen i'm, I'm really conscious of time we have a few more minutes um we just were granted that online and, and in the room as well um but we want to wrap up soon. So Dominic and Andrew, if you could keep your comments quite short, because I want to also give opportunity to have a few um, last thoughts from our panelists at the end. Um, over to you, Dominic. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. And I know we're running out of time. So following on from uh, Kieran, a couple of things. I, I just want to impress that the IGF is literally the, the only place that all stakeholders can come and meet and talk about things. Um, so I agree with the leadership aspects that Karen uh, talked about, but but don't forget, even the ITU, um, the council working group is, is still not open to all members or even sector members yet. So it's really important that we try and figure out how to get more participation, whether it's through um, individuals like, you know, paying for other people or just trying to get more people involved. And that also goes for um, the IETF. And I think a lot of it has to be around the fact that we need new ideas and new people. I know a lot of us have been doing this for quite a long time, and um, I love all of you, but I think we need to kind of bring in the people that are the doers, because they're the doers and the thinkers, right? Um, and and on the other hand, and, and one last thing I want to say around fragmentation is I think another 
concept that needs to be discussed that's perhaps even a little more important than fragmentation is consolidation. Uh, fragmentation is happening because of uh, regulation or, or digital sovereignty and other things going on in the geopolitical world. Consolidation is happening on a technical level, on all levels of the internet, um, either because of financial or business reasons or technical approaches. And I think we need to think more about that, and I'm kind of queuing up Andrew a little bit, <laughs> to think more about that in order to ensure that the technical aspect, the technical background of the internet is sustainable. And uh, thank you for the panel, by the way, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Dominique. Andrew. Uh, thank you uh, for that. And just on Kieran's point first, we, we, uh, with, without rehashing everything you said, because I, I fundamentally agree with it all. Um, uh, the, the one observation I made, I think the idea of the IGF leadership panel is extremely good. The question I have is whether the individuals that have been appointed to it have the bandwidth or in some cases attention span to actually make it work properly. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great concept, but but maybe just needs a bit of fine tuning on, on the participation um, if it's to make a, a real difference. Uh, and I agree with Kieran's point about it needs to reflect the, the, the views of the community uh, fundamentally. Um, and then very briefly on uh, again, uh, uh, Dominic cued me up very nicely on the sort of fragmentation versus centralisation, which I think is an enormous concern. Uh, in my view, centralisation is far more concerning in the short to medium term than fragmentation. Because um, we, we are in grave danger of sort of reverting back to walled gardens operated by uh, major tech conglomerates. Um, uh, I'm not convinced that's that's the right way to go, and it has significant implications uh, for from an end user perspective, be that for things like uh, privacy, uh, data access, dealing with malicious content, misinformation, um, and very obviously major major antitrust. Uh, c concerns uh, as well, um, uh, and not and not forgetting resilience uh, challenges that, that it also poses. Um, uh, so, so that needs, I think, both to be recognised and addressed, not just in the technical community where there's some discussion about it, albeit it's difficult because the dominant player, sort of players in that community are the same companies that have that dominant market position. But it also needs to be um, thought about and addressed. Um, um, in elsewhere in the multi-stakeholder uh, world uh, as well. Um, so, uh, as I say, my view, that that's at least as significant a threat as fragmentation, um, and, and that needs concern. But I'll stop there because uh, you're going to want to have some closing comments from everyone, and we will run out of time. So thank, you. thank you, Andrew, and a really good reminder. I think there's a lot of conversations about fragmentation here at the AGF, and it's a good reminder that there's certainly also trends to go in the other direction, and, and they're not necessarily contradictory in some ways, as you kind of pointed out. Um, we're closing the session, but I want to give all panelists the opportunity. This will be one line. I only want one line, um, but I want to get one takeaway between now and the IGF in Japan next year. One thing you want to see or want to leave um, IGF audience with um, that's, that's hopefully practical in implementing our future of the internet vision. Um, Marielsa, I'm going to start with you. Well, one line I'd like to say that UNESCO is inviting all of you for a conference uh, on the 21st to 23rd of February 2023 in our headquarters in Paris, when we'll be looking at uh, the future of you know, the uh, regulation and uh, uh, standard setting for internet platforms to work for the public good. You know, so uh, particularly looking at uh, how do we defend and protect freedom of expression online. So please do come. It's a fantastically specific um, yes. thing that we can all take away. So that's great. That, that's setting the scene for all the other panelists. Um, Olga, do you want to go next? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. I invite you to the next South School of Internet Governance. We had 200 students this year, all free and now with a university diploma if they succeed in the three stages of learning. And my comment to everyone, stay tuned, rise awareness, start with yourself, then with your family, with your colleagues, with your students, and keep on looking at what you're doing with the internet, not only about security, also about fake news, and be careful about that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olga. Um, Kieran, can I go to you next? One takeaway or one thing you want to see between now and the IGF in Japan? Um, 
I just would encourage anybody that has got to the point where they're following the IGF, so we're already a, a fairly small subset of people in the world, to um, to ask a question and to tell people what is the barriers that they have to getting involved more and their participation, to literally tell people what the issues are and why they're not more involved and so that we can start a conversation about that. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, Andrew, over to you. Thank you. Um, uh, the one thing that excites me looking forward uh, is Twitter, um, because I think the takeover of Twitter, I think, is really going to drive uh, a, a very important debate about the future of content moderation, and that needs to be had. Um, and then very specifically, um, multi-stakeholder community, please come to the ITF 116 meeting in Yokohama, um, either virtually or better still, uh, in person. It's 25th to 31st of March, um, and I'll put a link in the chat, um, which will take you to how, how to register um, and there's plenty of free access uh, uh, virtually for people that can't afford to, uh, to pay the entry fee thank you thank you Andrew you, you, your diaries are filling up really really fast I'm hoping you write writing that down um, finally Dominic your one takeaway sorry about that uh Two takeaways. First of all, I'm excited about the IGF and the IETF in Asia Pacific and excited to be going back to there. And the other the other takeaway is I'm super excited about um, all these people who haven't been online yet that are hopefully about to come online this year and next year in 2023. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank, thank you for making that one line that actually worked. I, I expected somebody to rebel against that instruction. Um, thank you all panelists. Um, fantastic discussion. Really, really practical. It's great to have such a positive discussion and focus on successes, but also identify where we can do more, but build on the successes rather than trying to just scrap the internet and start over, which I'm sure um, would not lead to any better um, situation either. So thank you all. Um, thank you for audience members and for sticking around. Um, we really hope to continue this conversation. You have your events in the diary now so we expect to see all of you there um, and i hope you have a good rest of the igf thank you so much